everyone, this is Jackie Kay from Fat Ninja Studios, here to talk to you about the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. With the MCU being on hold for the past year, we've had ample time to theorize what's in store for Phases 4 and beyond. After rewatching all 23 films, as well as diving into every teaser and trailer released so far, we compiled a list of predictions that utilize existing comic book story arcs and applied them to the films going forward. In this list, we'll cover both multiversal and small-scale events that happened across Marvel, providing you with clues to why we think it will come to pass. Please note these are only predictions, and most of these have not been confirmed at the time of recording. So, without further ado, possible spoilers ahead. This is 12 predictions on the future of the MCU. Enjoy! Number 1, God Loves, Man Kills Story Arc With Disney's acquisition of Fox, fans eagerly await for their favorite mutants to finally show up in the MCU. While there's many theories to how the X-Men and other mutants will make their appearance in the MCU, more on that in a minute, one major story arc already has its groundwork laid perfectly. In Captain America Civil War, we are introduced to the Sokovia Accords, a superhuman registration act to hold those with powers accountable. The next logical step, if suddenly hundreds of thousands of citizens started manifesting abilities, would be a public outcry for safety. And what better way would that be represented than with the God Loves, Man Kills storyline by Chris Claremont? Given the original's representation of persecution, religious zealotry, and hate group attacks, Disney has the perfect opportunity to throw in a little social commentary, as well as making a bombastic, entertaining superhero flick. If they can't get the Russo brothers back in the director's chair for this one, then honestly I'd like to see someone like David Fincher tackle this. Number 2, House of M. With the upcoming WandaVision series set to premiere on January 16th, at least at the time of this recording, there are many hints that it will be a riff on House of M. Most notably, the relationship with Vision, the birth of the twins Wiccan and Speed, and the reality warping within the bubble. However, I will take this one step forward. We all know that Scarlet Witch's abilities will be transcending what she's previously shown to be capable of, and that the aftermath will directly affect the Doctor Strange sequel, Multiverse of Madness. We predict one of the consequences of this will result in either the activation of a dormant X-gene, most likely introduced through the Eternals film, or a breach between two universes one of which houses the X-Men and other mutants but has no Avengers, and the main MCU universe. Could we possibly also get the return of Thanos this way? What about two Nick Furies? The second half of this prediction is that attempts made by either Sword or Agatha Harkness will result in the bubble itself bursting and having a ripple effect that will change the reality of the MCU on a much more cosmic scale than merging universes, and much like her No More Mutants moment, this event could possibly change the past, present, and future of the MCU with a soft reboot style narrative device. Number three, a separate reality. Outside of impressive rumors of characters being cast, we know that originally Scott Derrickson wanted to bring in Nightmare before leaving the project and Sam Raimi taking over. Now, aside from personal plans, there's also the rest of the MCU that this film has to tie into. And then there's the title itself, The Multiverse of Madness. So I'm just gonna fire a big volley of shots here. The storyline of a separate reality saw Baron Mordo using time travel to take out other sorcerers and trap Strange in the Eye of Agamotto to battle all sorts of monsters that were housed inside. However, in the MCU, the Eye is destroyed, the Time Stone being turned to dust by Thanos, and truthfully, the Eye itself did not function quite the same way as it did in the comics. Then again, given that there are many magical artifacts housed in the Sanctum, and given that we know that multiple realities will be a theme of this, we could see Baron Mordo using this to his advantage by pulling creatures from otherworldly dimensions into ours, such as Shumagorath, that in turn Doctor Strange will have to use an artifact to trap them, like a magical Ghostbuster. We know that the Shang-Chi film will be dealing with the Mandarin and the Ten Rings, which have actual magic properties. 
so it could be that possibly he helped Mordo gain the knowledge to bring these creatures into our realm. There's also the recent casting of Xochitl Gomez for the upcoming film, and rumors persisting that she may be playing America Chavez, who has the ability to hop between multiverses on a whim. She may be the key that allows Doctor Strange to enter the multiverse in the first place, and of course, the casting of Strange being in Spider-Man 3 and Tobey Maguire being in both films could indicate a Spider-Verse story arc crossover, but we'll have to leave that theory to another entry on the list. Number 4, The Kang Dynasty Although it's been confirmed that Jonathan Majors will be playing Kang in the upcoming Ant-Man and the Wasp Continuum, the story is still unknown at the time of this recording. Most people theorized during Ant-Man and the Wasp that while Scott Lang was in the Quantum Realm to rescue Janet Van Dyne, in the distance was Kang's kingdom. Given that we also got actual time travel in the MCU in Endgame, Kang most likely realizes as he would have been sitting outside of time in the Quantum Realm and would have witnessed the events unfold. This would give him the advantage to place himself inside the timeline to take over the world, or even take over Thanos' empire depending on how powerful they make his character. This could all be set up during the Doctor Strange sequel, Multiverse of Madness, as a possible future, or he could go back as far as the time during the Eternals to battle them for Earth's dominance. Then, there's the ghost factor. At the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp, we saw Scott enter the Quantum Realm to harness some quantum energy to help heal Ghost. However, Thanos snapped and everyone outside was blinked out of existence. This leaves the question, if Ghost wasn't snapped away, did she die a horrible death? Or if she was snapped away, is this the reason that Ant-Man may possibly be visiting the Quantum Realm in the third installment? Number 5, The Korvac Saga Given that we don't know much about the upcoming third installment of the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise, we don't really know what the story will entail, or even who's going to be on the roster. Let's say, though, that Sylvester Stallone's Starhawk joins the team. And let's say that since the Avengers used time travel in Endgame, it opened up rifts in the space-time continuum. And then, let's say a cyborg travels from the future and ends up in our time, disguising itself as a humanoid being named Michael Korvac. Essentially the space version of Ultron, it would be a really interesting battle between the Guardians and other spacefaring heroes, and an unstoppable robot from the future. Perhaps we will see the Collector again? His place was laid to waste, but was he? And maybe even the first appearance of Moondragon, Drax's daughter, who could have been brainwashed or so into forgetting her family and fighting as a mercenary. Either way, the Korvac Saga would make a great addition to the growing cosmic landscape of the MCU, and with heavy themes of time travel and multiple realities in most of the upcoming films, this one just fits perfectly. Number 6, Secret Wars. If our prediction for House of M is correct, with doors being opened into multiple universes through Scarlet Witch's actions, and we start getting alternate versions of characters, this would be a perfect setup for the Secret Wars event. Two universes occupying the same space cannot exist, and it would be an engrossing film to see two different versions of Nick Fury do whatever it takes to protect their own universe. Imagine a mind-bending film like this being directed by the likes of Christopher Nolan. Through this, we may even see an inclusion of other Marvel film universes, such as Sony's slow-building Spider-Verse, and perhaps get an explanation why there was no Spider-Man in Venom or in Morbius. We predict that Sony is looking to bring Miles Morales to the big screen, and it would be interesting if, say, Tobey Maguire was the Peter Parker of that universe, but during all this universe collapsing, he was pulled into a fight and either dies or is lost to another universe meaning that Miles has to step up and take the mantle. Who knows, but a Secret Wars film event would be a must if they truly do plan on bringing in the multiverse. Number 7, Under Siege. With Falcon and the Winter Soldier just over the horizon, there are a few facts we do know. We know that a primary antagonist of the series will be U.S. agent rivaling Sam Wilson for the title of Captain America, most likely egged on by good old boy General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, 
We also know that Zemo will make a resurgence, most likely in his barren title from the comics. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, I'm totally down for him to wear the purple ski mask. Always kind of reminded me of characters from, like, G.I. Joe somehow. Anyhow, with that being said, the Avengers are currently rebuilding themselves in the MCU. Not only did many die or retire, the entire compound was destroyed in Endgame when Thanos attacked. Without Tony Stark's ingenuity, they might not have another such secure place to call headquarters, so someone like Zemo could quite possibly gather up a bunch of soldiers and D-list henchmen and storm their home, possibly even creating the group The Masters of Evil. Think of it like a home invasion thriller, except people will have superpowers or super weapons. They could even go as far as to possibly have the attack on Wakanda itself. As it has been hinted that the city is now where most of the Avengers will be, and boy, that could be epic. Rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman, your presence will be missed. Number 8, Annihilation. Since the MCU will be exploring multiple universes, and we've already been to the Dark Dimension in the first Doctor Strange film, what about the Negative Zone? If the rumors are true that there will be a Nova film in the future, this could be a great way to introduce his character. A battle against the Nihilus and his galactic army, and possibly bring in Captain Marvel as she is protecting the Skrulls. And thus, if the Annihilation Wave threatens to destroy their home planet, or even the home planet of the Kree, well, let's just say it's about time we got another massive space battle like we did in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Number 9, The Coming of Galactus There would be no better way to introduce Marvel's first family, the Fantastic Four, than the story of Galactus' arrival. We already have a semi-introduction of the cosmic entities through the Guardians of the Galaxy films and the Infinity War saga films to know that Eternity and the Living Tribunal and such do exist in the MCU. So it stands to reason, so does Galactus, a force that is neither good nor evil, but brings balance to the universe by consuming matter and energy. This would be a great way to bring in more cosmic characters as well, such as the Silver Surfer and the Watchers. Many cosmic level events in the Marvel comics have seen Galactus at its center. And given the state of things after Infinity War, the Living Tribunal could send him to Earth to bring balance to the universe by devouring its life force as it seems our humble little planet has the majority of powerful beings living on it. Earth's mightiest heroes are basically responsible for the universe almost ending! And then again by using time travel, messing with the fabric of reality. With fan casting already targeting a Quiet Place director John Krasinski to play Reed Richards and his real wife, Emily Blunt, as Sue Storm, the real question is, who would you want to see as the god of devouring itself? Let's just hope this time around it's not just a sparkly space cloud. Number 10, Avengers vs. X-Men. Now we come to the real meat. If our previous predictions come true, and we get X-Men in the MCU, and Secret Wars begins to happen with the collapse of the multiverse, and there's a world movement to register and lock up mutants, well, then the central conflict of the storybook arc fits right in. Whether they bring back the classic roster of the Avengers, or an all-new team, this will almost certainly be the MCU's second civil war in a sense, seeing our heroes caught between doing their duty and doing what's right and it all coming to a head in a massive battle. Honestly, I just want to see Thor take on Magneto, or Gambit vs. Hawkeye, or even better, a classic fight between Wolverine and the Hulk. Number 11, Warlock and the Final Threat. Okay, so this one takes a little bit of forced puzzle solving, but we got hints that Adam Warlock will be in the MCU through Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Now, not much is known about the third installment being helmed by James Gunn, whose original plans were derailed after the infamous Twitter debacle. With Thor Love and Thunder coming out first, we will see Thor and the rest of the Guardians traveling through space, most likely looking to either possibly build the new Asgard, or maybe he will return to Battleworld and fight Beta Ray Bill. 
But it also could be this film in which we see the first appearance of Adam Warlock. In the comics, he played a significant role in the Infinity War saga. However, he was absent from the MCU film versions. But just maybe, if all these alternate universes merging stuff happens, we could see the return of the Infinity Stones themselves, giving Warlock the opportunity to create the Infinity Watch. If this happens, he could come into contact with the Soul Stone, and with that, we lead into... Number 12, The Magus Saga. Adam Warlock, in possession of the Soul Stone, could split his personality, driving the darkness from himself and creating Magus, a cosmic level threat that would be a perfect villain for an Avengers team of the film set in space. Imagine the Avengers asking the cosmic entities for help, and they turn them down, so Captain Marvel leading the charge recruits the rest of the new Avengers, as well as other teams like perhaps Alpha Flight or the Guardians, or if he's to make an appearance as the sole survivor of Thanos' attack, Nova himself. A battle spanning across a galaxy could be epic, and we've only gotten small tastes here and there. This could be Marvel's War of the Light, but instead of a core of Green Lanterns in the DC Comics storyline, it's heroes from various worlds standing together to face an indomitable threat. Number 13, the bonus entry. The Spider-Verse and One More Day. With so many rumors swirling around about both the third Spider-Man film in the MCU and the future of Sony's own Spider-Man-less Sinister Six universe, it could very possibly point to the events of the Multiverse of Madness film to affect a multiverse crossover event. Let's take a step back. Sam Raimi had his Spider-Man trilogy in the early 2000s, starring Tobey Maguire as the titular hero. Then we got the Mark Webb film starring Andrew Garfield, which petered out pretty early. And of course, the current Spider-Man, Tom Holland. All three actors have been rumored, or in the case of Tobey Maguire, confirmed to make appearances in not just one, but two MCU films. While it isn't confirmed he will be playing Spider-Man, we do also know that some of the villains will be crossing over as well. With the Vulture, portrayed by the outstanding Michael Keaton, making an appearance in the upcoming Sony-produced Morbius film, and also Jamie Foxx's divisive turn as Electro set to make an appearance in the as-of-yet-untitled third MCU Spider-Man film. Not even taking into consideration that Sam Raimi will be directing the Doctor Strange sequel, and that the character will also be appearing in both his sequel and the new Spider-Man film, the fact that these villains will be appearing in each other's respective universe films already suggests a multiversal event. With that setup, we take a look at how Far From Home ended. The first film to kick off Phase 4, where at the very end, Mysterio has leaked a video to J. Jonah Jameson, revealing the true identity of Spider-Man as Peter Parker. Any comic book fan can tell you right now, this is one of Peter's biggest fears, as every time someone discovers his true identity, someone close to him gets killed. In the MCU so far, however, this hasn't come to pass just yet, with the Vulture keeping Peter's secret, and Mysterio dying before he can use the knowledge to go after someone like Aunt May or MJ. Then again, he did release it to the public, and while this could potentially lead up to the demise of someone close to Peter, I believe this is where the One More Day storyline will come into play. The question is, what will he have to give up to be able to undo this? Or will it be more like the end of Civil War from the comics, where Doctor Strange casts a spell to make everyone forget? Is this where we will get the on-screen introduction of Mephisto? The only other course of events that we can foresee is that Peter will be unable to backpedal this news and somehow either die or be forced out of the main MCU universe into the alternate Sony-established set of films. If he dies, does this mean we could see someone like Miles take up the mantle going forward? Maybe showing up at the end of the second Venom film? Will we meet Madame Webb and get a bunch of different Spider-Men? so that they can make appearances while Peter is at school, so it takes the heat off of him. Looks like we'll be waiting a while to get our answers, and we'll be sure to keep you all updated with our theories as more information is made public.
All right, that's our list. What did you think? If you enjoyed our video, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to Hulk smash that bell icon to stay up to date via notification of our releases. You can also reach out to us on Twitter, at StudiosFat, or on Discord, link provided in the description below. We also have a Patreon if you're feeling generous. Please check it out. Every dollar helps. So, do you have any theories of your own? Feel free to leave us a comment. But remember, don't be a dick. Everyone has a valued opinion. You know, my first cosplay was Gambit, being a big fan of Marvel and all. And what's always attracted me to the character was that he is the silent gent with a bit of a rebellious side, always out to do good, but often using less than desirable methods. I'm really looking forward to seeing how they bring his kinetic abilities to the big screen. The last time we saw him was in X-Men Origins Wolverine, and the less said about that, the better. Anyway, let me know your favorite X-Men. I've been your host, Jackie K, and on behalf of Fat Ninja Studios, Excelsior.